What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Catching Up segment on the Tonic Accord podcast. I'm one of your co-hosts, Alex Kapitko, joining you guys from Madrid, and I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy, and I hope more than anything you're taking care of your mental health and your physical health during these kind of uncertain and new unprecedented times for a lot of us. Today I'd like to discuss a topic that has really been on my mind for the last week, and it involves a theory that I've been developing over why some countries in the West have dealt with this coronavirus pandemic better than others. I've noticed now that there have been two opposing narratives that have been developed in the West over the coronavirus and how governments are responding to it. Most of the countries that have been slow to react to the virus and slow to enforce mandatory lockdowns have been countries like the U.S., Brazil, and the United Kingdom. All of these countries have one main thing in common, and I think this is important. These countries are all run by leaders who don't trust the government. They believe in the strength of the private sector and open markets, and they take a laissez-faire approach to the economy. All three of these governments, by a broad definition, are also right-wing and conservative, and they all prescribe to the classical liberal or neoliberal libertarian view of how a government should respond to the crisis. So Boris Johnson, Donald Trump, and President Bolsonaro all have been slow to accept information about the severity of the pandemic, they have been open to misinformation, and all share a libertarian view that the government should not be forcing businesses to shut down, nor should it be forcing people to stay at home. And to me, it is becoming ever more clear that this crisis may be providing a strong rebuttal of libertarianism on the global and governmental scale. Now, I have always described myself as a libertarian. I'm someone that's like libertarian principles, especially on the individual and social level, mainly when it comes to personal responsibility. I, I think libertarians have a better grasp on social issues such as gay marriage, and even more so when it comes to drug laws and how they should be enforced. I think the strength of the libertarian argument comes from the usage of the word harm and the idea of the harm principle which was popularized by John Stuart Mill. Mill's harm principle states that a person can do whatever he or she wants as long as his or her actions do not harm others. And if they do harm others, society is able to prevent those actions. I think this is an important point and is why libertarians are more socially open to issues such as drug legalization and gay marriage. These actions should be permitted since the net harm on others is relatively low. That being said, my support for libertarian seems to drop when it reaches the federal level. When leaders like Johnson and Bolsonaro have wanted to leave government out of people's lives during a crisis and allow businesses to remain open and people to still move around, this, in my opinion, is violating John Stuart Mill's harm principle. Stuart Mill made it clear that the government must be able to prevent harm when necessary, and the responses by Boris Johnson and Bolsonaro and Trump during the early stages all seem to violate the harm principle. By telling citizens that the virus is no worse than the flu, that people can still go out, and by discrediting the experts, these leaders are not only slowing down the proper response, but they are also harming people. They are instigating people to put harm to others. I think for this reason, we are seeing that a free market laissez-faire approach could be detrimental to a global health crisis. In the United States, we can already see violations of the harm principle when it comes to the national response and also the fact that there is no nationwide lockdown. This has left states to do their own measures. This lack of a coordinated response has meant that some states have taken the issue seriously and others have not. I mean, let's talk about Florida Governor Ron DeSantos' late response in closing the beaches. He's, back, he's basically sacrificed people for the economy and has allowed this virus to move around for weeks and weeks without any repercussions. Then there was Texas's Lieutenant Governor Don Patrick, who in a very abhorrent moment told Fox News, Do we have to shut down the entire country for this? I think we can get back to work. He also said that older people would rather die than let COVID-19 harm the U.S. economy. This idea may seem crazy, 
But it does go with the libertarian argument for this crisis. Let the private sector continue what it is doing, and this crisis will eventually be over. However, unfortunately, this is again violating the harm principle. Boris Johnson in the UK has also had a late response that baffled scientists and world officials. His lockdowns came too late, and likely the virus again marinated for weeks. The, the Economist also reports that Bolsonaro's government response in Brazil has also tried as much as they could to manipulate information, discredit experts, and muddle the message on social distancing. The trend in all these places seems to be the same. These governments don't want to use the state's power to control citizens. And this is dangerous. It seems that neoliberals and small government advocates don't want to sacrifice the free market for the common welfare of the country. And now to highlight my point even further, countries that have had the best responses to the pandemic have been those that seem to reboot a libertarian response. These are countries that have involved large federal responses, nationwide lockdowns, and even Keynesian stimulus packages to help keep people afloat. Now, I must make it clear that the U.S. has approved that large $2 trillion stimulus bill, and this is making steps towards a national lockdown as well. But I think it was too late and only came after months of pressure and condemnation from the administration. The federal government was not prepared, and that comes from years of deregulation and a lack of support towards the federal government. Now, one of the Western countries that has had a very adequate response has been Germany, which is led by Chancellor Angela Merkel. And this was due to the ability to utilize a strong government apparatus around the crisis. According to Christian Drosten, who is director of the Institute of Virology at Berlin's Charité Hospital, he says, I believe that we are just testing much more than in other countries, and we are detecting our outbreak early. He also says that Germany has been testing around 120,000 people a week for COVID-19 during the period from late February to late March. This has clearly had drastic results, as according to NPR from an article in late March, Germany has one of the lowest fatality rates in the world at around a half of a percent. This is much different than many countries in Europe, like Italy. And it does seem clear that an early response and a nationwide government response was key. Another nation outside of Europe that handled the issue well was Taiwan. According to Jason Wang, a Taiwanese doctor and associate professor at Stanford University, Taiwan rapidly produced and implemented a list of at least 124 action items in the past five weeks to protect public health. Also, according to CNN, among these early measures was the decision to ban travel from parts of China, stop cruise ships, and in addition, officials also moved to ramp up domestic face mask production, they rolled out island-wide testing, and they announced new punishments for spreading disinformation about the virus. All of these responses required intense government intervention and cooperation, but seemed to work. Now, before I get out of here today, I think in general the contrast is clear. The countries that have put faith in their institutions and have utilized government intervention have had more success. The U.S. is at least improving and at least has had this stimulus package. But the issue seems to be that they have embraced this side, but still haven't used the government to enforce cooperation. Giving stimulus money to people and businesses is quite important, but so is the need for the government to institute an adequate response. Now, I think in times of peace and prosperity, there can be an open debate about free markets and laissez-faire policies, but a crisis needs government intervention to spearhead the response. And as Stuart Mill said, Government is supposed to protect people from harm when harm is imposed. And the only way to do so is by putting faith in a government response. Libertarianism can be functioning inside of a small community or amongst individuals. But I doubt any of the classical liberal theorists would have imagined how globalized the world has become and how a pandemic doesn't just threaten individual states, but everyone. Even on the regional level in the U.S., we have seen people harm one another. People are hoarding and selling toilet paper and hand sanitizers at high rates. This seems like the man-eat-man -man world that is created when there is no top authority controlling this issue. And the United States especially needs to come together on this. There needs to be a better national response. 
Classic liberals talk about how the government should be like a watchdog, only protecting people when their rights are infringed on. And I think this pandemic is exactly the time for government to do its job. And, and unfortunately, we've seen governments that haven't done that. And with that, I want to thank you guys for listening. I'm Alex Kapitko, and Drew and I will be back tomorrow with another episode. So we'll catch you then. Thank you. Have a great day.